sines and cosines. We're actually only going to get to the law of sines in this uh, lesson. We'll, we'll continue with the law of cosines on Monday. Here we have a triangle. And so far, what we've explored is that we can solve for the missing parts of any right triangle given a certain amount of information. For example, if we're given all the side lengths, we, we can use trigonometric ratios to figure out the two acute angles. Or actually, if we're given one side length and one angle, um, we can figure out the other sides, the other side lengths. And, and frankly, actually, if we're only given two side lengths, right, we can figure out the third side length through the, through the Pythagorean theorem, then the angles through trigonometry. But through, through trigonometric ratios, we can use one angle, one side to figure out sides. And, and uh, in fact, just from the, uh, the, the, the corollary with the complement, uh, uh, or excuse me, the two ac uh, acute angles in a right triangle are complements um, or complementary. That's, that's how we find that other angle, just through a simple subtraction problem. Um, what we haven't done yet is just any triangle and seeing if the same thing is going to follow suit here. And there is a different theorem we're going to use. And today, this is um, our proof for why this theorem works. It's always important to, to know that the why is just as important as the what. You will not be asked to read, uh, to perform this proof again, okay? But it's going to enrich your understanding as to why we can utilize this uh, formula or these ratios when solving for the missing parts of a uh, of any triangle, not just for right triangles. So here we go. We have a triangle ABCD where CD is listed as an altitude. So if we're going to go over here and use some trig, um, first of all, let's actually just consider big triangle ABCD before we actually even look at CD as the altitude. Remember that that side AC is opposite uh, angle B. So angle lowercase b is going to be another name for that side. Moreover, we have side BC in triangle ABC, which is opposite angle A. So lowercase a is another name for it. I'm going to just add one more letter just for the sake of, uh, just for the algebra we're about to do. I'm going to name CD. Uh, I'm going to say, name it lowercase h, and that's going to be helpful here for what we're about to set up. So now we have these two right triangles that are set up within our larger uh, ordinary triangle. Okay, so let's take angle A. I can find measurement of angle A because it is reflexively included within both the right triangle a, a, C, D, and the bigger triangle, A, B, C. So it's going to be the same no matter what. But we can find A by doing the following. We could say that the sine of angle A is equal to lowercase h, right, the opposite side over B, the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Moreover, we could do the same thing from uh, B as well, right? For the sine of B is going to be lowercase h over uh, lowercase a. Okay. So now let's look at this algebraically. If I were to solve for h, right, I'd multiply both sides by b. So b times the sine of a would be lowercase h, as well as I can, on this side, multiply by a on both sides. And so a times the sine of b, right, the a is going to factor out on the right side, would be equal to h. Now both of these quantities are equal to h, meaning that they both are equal to each other. So b times the sine of a is equal to a times the sine of b, okay? Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. Because what we could do is we can rewrite this ratio, right? I'm going to rewrite this one more time because I'm going to operate on this and I don't want to lose what I'm, lose my work. So, um, or I want to be able to demonstrate my work and show you what we concluded with. But let's say that I want to solve for, in terms of b, I can divide both sides by a and these a's will factor out. And that simultaneously, I could divide both sides by B, right? Works out as long as I do the same thing to both sides. So now look at what I have. I have that the sine of A over lowercase a is equal to the sine of B over lowercase b, okay? I could do the same thing going back to the beginning. I could do the same thing here for side C, or excuse me, angle C, and uh, create an altitude through, uh, for example, through angle B, and I could perform the same exact proof. So I could, to say that the sine of A over A is equal to the sine of B over B, we could also say the sine of C over C is the same thing in general what we just proved here is what is known as the law of sines. 
Okay? This works for any triangle. Sine of an angle over its opposite side is going to be equal in every single case. Okay? So, let's use this now. I'm going to do a few examples. The measure of angle A is 17. And the measure of angle B is 29. And, and A is equal to 8. Then how long is B? Okay. <clears throat> so this works like this. Let's rework our law of sines. Again, we only need two of the ratios, right? Sine of A over A is equal to the sine of B over B. So we have some of these quantities, right? The sine of angle A is 17, so the sine is 17 over A, which is 8, equal to the sine of B, B being 29 degrees, over lowercase b, which is what we're solving for. Good thing that we uh, remember this skill from way back when we learned about multiplication and fractions, right? We can take a cross product here to solve. So we have b times the sine, oops, sorry, my tablet's getting a little sensitive here. To my hand, b times the sine of 17 is equal to eight times the sine of 29. Now, I need to solve for b by itself, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by the sine of 17. Oh, goodness. Oh, this thing is being so sensitive to my hands so all of a sudden I haven't had that problem. There we go. So the sine of 17 is gonna factor out. What this leaves us to it with is that b is equal to eight times the sine of 29 divided by the sine of 17. And that is our exact answer. Now, of course, that's kind of a strange answer, right? That's not how you, it would come out on like a, like a tape measure, right? So um, what we need to do is punch that into our calculator. So we're gonna multiply eight times the sine of 29 and then divide by the sine of 17. And according to your calculator, run right it to the nearest tenth. It should be about 13.3. Go ahead and pause the video um, and take a moment to verify this on your calculator. It's quite important that you know how to make this uh, work and that you're able to provide me with both the exact answer and the approximation. Remember, both are going to be required on your next exam. Next, we're going to find the measure of angle A in triangle ABC. If C is equal to 7, A is equal to 9, and the measure of angle C is equal to 43. <clears throat> All right. So, again, we're going to use the law of sines here because we have, we're, we're trying to compare angles and sides that are going to be. Um, to uh, have this ratio with one another. And in this case, I think sometimes we get stuck on A and B, but remember sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B, which is equal to the sine of C over C. And we can just do this ratio right here rather simply. Now we're trying to find angle A, so we can't take a sine of A yet, right? Um, but we can substitute in all the other places, A equal to nine, sine of 43, because angle C is 43, and then lowercase C is seven. Now, I could do a cross product. I really could, but I'm, again, I'm trying to solve for A. So the way I'm going to undo this is I'm going to multiply both sides by 9, okay? If you take a cross product, you're going to multiply by 7 kind of unnecessarily. It's fine. You can do that. It's um, I'm going to take one fewer step than you are because you're going to turn around and have to divide by 7 again anyway, okay, when you're trying to get it by itself, get A by itself. So we're going to take the sine of A is equal to sine of 43. I'm sorry, 9 times the sine of 43 all over 7. Now, we have to get A by itself, so how do we do that? Well, we have to do the inverse sine, right? So we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides. So the inverse sine of 9 times the sine of 43 all over 7 is your answer. If you're using the strongly recommended Texas Instruments calculator, when you punch this in, um, you're gonna wind up getting an approximation, right? Make sure that you use inverse sine. It will or follow order of operations for you. Just make sure that you do the following. You're punching in, for example, the sine of 43, 
you're going to have to close your parentheses on the other end of 43. Just make sure you do that. Once you punch this guy in, you should get, it's about 61.3 degrees as output on your calculator, okay? So make sure that you're, uh, take a moment, pause the uh, video, punch that into your calculator, make sure that the output of this inverse sine of nine times the sine of 43 divided by seven will result in 61.3. Come and see me if you are having a difficult time getting that to work in your Texas Instruments calculator. All right. <clears throat> we are going to solve triangle ABC if the measure of angle A is equal to 112, the measure of angle C is equal to 8, and the measure, I'm sorry, and the lowercase c is equal to 2. So solving the triangle, back to these problems again. Remember how we start these. We're going to need to start first with our solution box in the top right corner. Okay, I'm going to try and make my solution box a little bit bigger. All right, so let's solve for A to start, right? So we're going to take the sine of angle A, which is 112, and divide by A. And we're going to take the sine of 8, which is C, and divide it by 2, which is lowercase c, right? Again, solving for A. So we're going to, again, we're going to take my cross product here. I'm going to have 2 times the uh, sine of 112 equal to a times the sine of 8. And you divide both sides by the sine of 8 to get a by itself. So that you get 2 times the sine of 112 over the sine of 8. And that is angle A. So um, angle A is one of the things I'm solving for. Okay, When I punch it into my calculator, I should get 13.3. Okay. I also will have B that I'm solving for. I also have angle B that I'm solving for. Now, angle B is going to be the quickest one. It's the next thing I'm actually going to do because I have given they've given me two angles, and we know that all three angles in a triangle have to equal 180. So the third angle, right, 112 plus 8 is 120. The third angle has to be 60, okay? Has to be. And we can use that to solve for the next thing. Now, we're going to take the sine of 60, and we're solving for lowercase b. And the issue is that we have either C or actually we have an A that we could work with and we could do the sine of A, which is 112 over 13.3. Why we don't wanna do that and it's this. A is an approximation. So when we get our approximated answer here for B in the end, we will have an approximation of an approximation and there's gonna be some rounding errors that are gonna to mess that up for us. So the better answer here is going to be yielded from actually using C again. So we're going to take the sine of 8 divided by 2, So because we know that C is exactly equal to 2, rather than having a rough guess through what angle A is equal to. Okay. Again, taking our cross product, we have 2 times the sine of 60 is equal to B times the sine of 8. We divide both sides by the sine of 8. Okay. So you have 2 times the sine of 60 over the sine of 8 is equal to lowercase b. Okay, once I punch that into my calculator, my approximation, which I put into the solution box in the top right corner, is about 12.4. All right, so that's it. Um, except for the following, we're going to come up with some problems. There's one problem on your homework you cannot do. That's on purpose. You're, it, it should be pretty obvious to you when you get to it. Um, but you just, the law of sines is not going to be sufficient enough, right? Think about this. What if I gave you all of the sides of a triangle? Could you use the law of sines? If you weren't given any of the angle measures and only given side lengths, could you solve for the angle measures using the law of sines? Okay? It'll probably prove to be difficult. So. You will find that law of cosines problem when you find it, right? Because that's going to be the trick to solving that problem. It'll be law of cosines. Um, your textbook has instructions. If you can't wait, which I, I strongly recommend you look ahead, try to see if you can figure it out using the law of cosines, okay? Um, it's, a, it's another formula, um, and we'll go over it in class on Monday. So if you have any questions, go ahead and seek me out, and I'm happy to answer them. Good luck.